Since the early 1980s, the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station produced plenty of electricity and plenty of controversy. The plant no longer produces power, it's being decommissioned, but it still presents plenty of debate about what to do over its 3.6 million pounds of nuclear waste. Officials from Southern California Edison took our crew from the Union Tribune on a tour of the plant that they insist is being dismantled promptly and safely. The containment structure is a very robust structure that houses the reactor building. The hole that we cut out there was to facilitate the removal of the old steam generators and the placement of the new steam generators. It was the only way to get them into the building was to cut a hole there. The San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station has not been generating electricity since January of 2012. But this place is hardly a ghost town. There are 325 full-time employees, as well as contract employees who are helping decommission the plant. We are currently in the area of the plant that houses the components and pipings and systems that support the part of the plant that creates the steam that actually turns the turbine um, and creates the electricity. So the water would go inside the containment building, come back out here, turn, and it would be turned to steam. It would then create um, the force to drive the turbine, then that water would be condensed and then sent back in through that loop. This area here might show more than any place else the changes here in San Onofre. Those two gigantic pipes, they used to generate 660 million gallons of ocean water. They used to go through every day. Now, they're empty. So we are currently in the control room for the systems that are part of the cleaning of the secondary side water system in the plant. So that system that I described before that would uh, turn to steam, run the turbine, mm -hmm. needs to be a very clean system of water. So we're in the control room of all the systems that are used to clean that water. We're standing just outside the heart of the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. We're right outside the control room. Back in its heyday when the nuclear generating station was operating at full capacity, there would be about 12 people down below. Now, there's just a couple. But can what's left on the site survive a disaster such as the one at Fukushima? The Fukushima plant has a completely different design than the plant here at San Onofre. And yes, it was water that, that damaged the Fukushima plant. Our design features for our safety of the plant here includes the elevation that we are above the sea level. And that includes worst case scenarios like high tide and worst case earthquakes and worst case hurricane conditions that would actually bring the water up. We still have margin to bring in the water over this seawall. Okay, so where is the spent nuclear fuel here at San Onofre? Well, two thirds of it are behind these walls in what's called wet storage. The other one third of spent nuclear fuel here at San Onofre is right over my shoulder in dry cast storage. However, eventually within a few years, everything, all the spent fuel will be in dry cast storage. The casts are very safe. Uh, dry cast storage technology has been used in the U.S. Across, you know, around the country since 1986. Very successfully, there has never been a breach of a cask. There's never been a radiation release from a cask. They're very safe. They're well designed. These casks here, or these canisters here, are designed to the highest seismic standards in the country. So it's a very robust, well-designed system. But for many of the residents in the area who pack community engagement panels that can often get tense, such assurances just don't register. And if we want to start with trust, let us have canisters that we feel we can trust. The last remnants of the plant, even its two distinctive domes, are supposed to be gone by 2023. But until the federal government comes up with a place to put the spent fuel, the waste is going to stay on the beach. For the San Diego Union Tribune, this is Rob Nikoleski.